Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Joe's Metal Man Cave. Today we're going to do something uh, quite a bit different. We're actually going to leave the Metal Cave, and we're going to go on a little shopping trip. But uh, before we kind of get into where we're going to go, I have to give credit where credit's due. Uh, so I got the idea to do this video from Simon over at Explosive Action. If you've not seen his vlog, I highly recommend it. He talks about a lot of black, death, and thrash metal releases, as well as some other odds and ends, and occasionally does... Uh, uh, movie reviews, horror movies, that kind of stuff. The guy's got a huge collection of uh, records, CDs, tapes, and uh, DVDs, Blu-rays, and VHS tapes. A very cool uh, vlog I've been watching for a couple of years now, and I've always enjoyed it. He does a great job with it, so if you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. But uh, the, uh, the store we're going to today is called The Exclusive Company. Yeah. Um, if you live in southeast Wisconsin and you are a music fan, it is almost a guarantee at some point you have gone to the exclusive company. Uh, the record store has been around since 1956, and it was originally founded by a guy named Mr. G, uh, who uh, later on kind of branched out and had a few other stores, I believe six or seven locations throughout southeast, southeast Wisconsin. But uh, unfortunately, a few months ago, uh, Mr. G passed away, and... Uh, I'm not sure if he didn't have any kids or family members to carry on the record store, but uh, with his death, the exclusive company is uh, passing on with him. Um, which is really unfortunate because, uh, for me personally, this place, uh, I mean, it's a record store I've gone to hundreds and hundreds of times uh, over the years. And in fact, uh, the very first uh, heavy metal CD I bought was at the exclusive company way back in 1993, and that album is Megadeth's Countdown to Extinction. Yeah, man. Sometime back in 1993, I saw the music video for Sweating Bullets on uh, MTV, or perhaps Beavis and Butthead. I can't really remember, but I just knew I saw it, I enjoyed it, and I, I had to get it. I had to know what it was, and uh, I guess that's sort of where my heavy metal story starts, so to speak. You know, it's uh, you know, it started out small and it's blown up to something quite a big, and, and I mean, you know, it's been almost 30 years of listening to this music at this point, so it's pretty cool. And the fact that I bought it at the exclusive company, the fact that I mean, this is that same CD I bought from there all those years ago, I mean, that's super cool. I even have this memory of uh, sometime in 1994 riding my bicycle up to the exclusive company and picking up the then new Megadeth album, Euthanasia. So, uh, lots of memories of this place. I've gone there so many times, and uh, I was 12 years old when I bought Countdown to Extinction, so it's, it's kind of hitting me and pulling the heartstrings a little bit, but uh, enough of that talk. Let's go to the exclusive company and buy some records, shall we? Go into the record store, drive into the record store, gonna get some records, it's gonna be cool, and I'm gonna miss the exclusive company like hell when it's gone, because I've been buying CDs there since 1993, and the song really sucks. <laughs> God damn, man. Uh, yeah, man, there's totally like nothing uh, dangerous to both the camera or myself if I am put the camera on my dashboard while I'm driving down the street. Don't do this at home, kids. This is very stupid, especially if you have an $800 camera like I do. All right, let's get to this goddamn store, shall we? All right, well, we've arrived at the exclusive company. We're uh, chilling in the parking lot for a minute. Uh, you know, while I was driving here, I was thinking to myself, like, man, I have driven to this parking lot and you know, so many times, I mean, it used to be like a, a weekly thing where I drive here, and really, really, the only reason I don't come here as much is because I live on the other side of town, and it's like a 20-minute drive or something now, where it, as it used to be like a 5-minute drive for me. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it might be one of the last times I come here. It's supposed to close very soon, and uh, I'm just dreading that day when I, uh, <laughs> I drive higher and I see that it's uh, turned into a fucking Starbucks or some other stupid bullshit like that. So, uh, well, let's go do probably one more uh, last shopping trip at the exclusive company. Warning, this video has been identified by lips that action to potential. Oh, <laughs> I guess you like my funny joke there, yeah. Well, the reason why I put that in there was because uh, the camera gets very shaky during this video and I don't want to be any uh, be responsible for anyone having a seizure, yeah. So uh, here we are walking up to the exclusive company and uh, I decided I had to dub my voice over this video, and the reason for that is because when I walked into the shop, there was this god-awful fucking uh, uh, emo pop playing, and uh, for one thing, I didn't want a goddamn copyright uh, copyright claim on this video, and I didn't want anyone watching this video to have to endure such a travesty. 
So yeah, I decided to redub it and then put some music behind my voice here, and I'm just going to be, uh, you know, talking over this video. So yeah. <laughs> so here is the entrance of the uh, exclusive company. Uh, this was shot on a Monday afternoon, really quiet. Um, the most important part of the exclusive company is they had a place, in a little section called the Metal House, and. Over the years, several of my friends uh, worked there and shopped there, and it, it was a really cool place. Um, looking back to like 2010, 2011, a, a buddy of mine worked there, and you know, back in those days, I could be like, "Hey, man, could you get this in stock? I need to get in stock for me." And uh, it, it was cool because he had worked at a record store back in the late 90s too. He had turned it into his own sort of. Uh, I don't know, something like his own Hellefeta shop, and he had a lot of black metal in the shop back then, and he kind of did the same thing here, it was really cool, he had a lot of good stuff in stock, there was a lot of black metal, just everything that kind of pertained to his taste, and it was cool, and it sucks that he doesn't work there anymore, but, uh, yeah, another friend of mine worked there years later too, but, uh, you know, it, it was always cool stopping there, seeing him and hanging out and talking and stuff like that, but, uh, yeah, after he quit too, the, this area kind of, it, it kind of changed, I guess. Uh, there wasn't as good of albums in stock anymore, and I mean, uh, I just kind of didn't I stopped coming as much, really, you know? So, uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, here we are, we're looking at uh, the records. Uh, you know, I was going to buy this, you know, all Nathrak uh, LP here. I was really excited to see that because uh, I had heard their demos back in the day, probably about 2000, enjoyed them a lot, so it was super cool to see that. Um, but yeah, here we are looking at the LPs. Uh, I am not as big as a vinyl guy as I used to be. Um, I used to be really into vinyl back before it was trendy to be into vinyl, and then I kind of lost interest, and then when the whole vinyl uh, trend, I guess, if you want to call it that, sort of kicked up, I got back into it. But then the past year or so, I just have not been buying much vinyl. It's just it's too expensive. I mean, I, I, I simply cannot justify paying... 30 to 35 dollars for a vinyl record when I could get two or three CDs for that price and maybe like four cassettes. I mean, I'm not, uh, I, I don't really think of myself as a music or a black metal collector per se. I, uh, I look at myself as a listener and a fan. You know, I don't need a, a LP version and a CD version of the album to uh, justify, uh, you know, my fanship or whatever like that. You know, it's just, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, I, I want the music, it doesn't matter what format, but at this point in time, preferably, uh, CDs or cassettes are going to have to do, because I just can't, uh, can't justify that, that larger price tag. And I'm sure in other countries, this stuff is even more expensive, but, uh, man, oh man, I just, to me, $30, $35 for a single album, that's, that, that's just too much. So here we are, you know, we're looking at the B section. It was cool they still had Burzum there, you know, a lot of people and places, I guess, are banning Burzum now. That's, that's bullshit, man, you know. Varg, you know, his beliefs are one thing, but uh, the music, which has nothing to do with those beliefs, really, uh, you know, it shouldn't be banned, uh, but uh, yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> we know how that's going. Yeah, post a picture of Burzum on Instagram and get the ban hammer, man, so yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Continue to look through the LPs. Uh, Danzig, Devil Driver, Bruce Dickinson, Dio. Yeah, common names. Everyone knows them. I have a lot of the, a lot of stuff at home. Original presses of Dio and stuff like that, you know. Uh, it's weird to me sometimes. Uh, yeah, Doro, she's hot, man. I was like a 60-year-old woman with that hot still. What's up with that? <laughs> oh, man. When I saw this here, I was like, is that the re-release of the old uh, Nuclear Blast compilations from like the mid-90s? But then I realized it was a brand new one. I was like, oh, okay. Because I was going to say those old compilations, the CD ones, you can get them off of like uh, Discogs for probably like 2 or $3 right now if you wanted. I think, maybe, I don't know. And Slaves, first album. I got the original Death Like Silence pressing on CD at home. So, yeah, no need for an LP there. Yeah. Um. Man, it really sucked they had the emo pop playing during this video, man. It would have been cool if it could have kept my original dialogue as I saw stuff, but I was not going to subject you guys to that. And you'd probably turn the video off as soon as you heard it, too. Five Finger Fuck Fist, and of course, they have to have that bullshit. A funeral Mist. I should have bought this now when I was uh, watching the video and editing. I was like, man, why did I not buy that? I mean, 
again, that's probably available on CD and cheaper, but still, uh, I, ha I haven't seen that in a long time, so would have been. I should have. Maybe I'll go back. I don't know. Whatever. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, where are we going here? Uh, Grim Reaper, Gall, Ghoul, War, Havoc. Some other shit I can't see. Whatever that is, I don't know. Hammerfall, Halloween. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really point the camera in a good uh, spot during this part of the video. No, whatever. All right, moving on. Oh, what we got here? Oh, Metallica. Everyone loves Metallica. Venom, Catatonia, Motorhead up there. Some other shit. I don't know what it is. Halloween shirt. Uh, misplaced kettle decapitation LP by Judas Priest. Jack Staff. Catonia. Kralis. Uh, yeah. Um, Mortis Gold, local band that's been going since forever. Not really a fan, but whatever. Moonspell, Darkness and Hope. Yeah. Mysticum. Yeah, that's great stuff there, man. I really want to get my hands on that demo compilation, Lost Masters of the Universe, because their demos are just phenomenal. I mean, if you like their first album, In the Streams of Inferno, man, got to get that compilation of the demo. So good, man. And I, I don't know why I've sat on not getting that. Uh, it's been off for a number of years now. I guess I should probably change that, right? Yeah, as I'm recording this uh, audio and uh, sort of reminding <laughs> myself to do that, right? Yeah. We'll see. It'll probably be another six months or a year before I actually get a, do a collection update. I'm like, hey, remember this? Yeah. Right. Rotten Christ now. Um, yeah. I mean, this shop always, you know, had a pretty good selection of stuff. I mean, even if, like, uh, you know, if you're, like, into, I don't know. I mean, it's not as much underground and obscure stuff as I would have preferred the shop to have. I mean, again, when my buddy was working there, they had much more cooler stuff than stock and all, but, uh, yeah. Alright, well, we're moving on to the new CD releases, and, uh, man, you, you see this, you know, like, look at that. How is it that Korn is still making music, man? I, I don't understand. Who buys that bullshit still? Unbelievable. <laughs> Some other stuff here. Napalm, Death reissues, Saxon reissues. Sepultura down there. I don't know. And other stuff. Yeah, I know. It just never. I don't know. I look at the new releases, see like what's popular and stuff today, and I'm just like, man. It's either some fucking new band I never heard of, or it's like some ancient band from the 80s that's somehow still going, or it's reissues and stuff like that. I don't know. Some more uh, probably reissues and some other shit that I can't uh, make out what, what was there. Hey, now we're moving on to the CDs. Man, they used to have so many good CDs in stock at this place. Uh, just You could go in there and just always walk out with so much good stuff. Man, it's really, past couple of years, just really kind of declined in quality. I mean, still some good stuff in here. Uh, finding the, the uh, CD version of that Ain't All Nathrak uh, LP they saw earlier, and I picked that up. So that's cool. I was glad to find that on CD. But yeah, there's still, you know, again, lots more underground black metal and death metal stuff, you know. Uh, I'd always walk out with like four or five CDs, and it used to be very much uh, a weekly thing to come here and just, you know, browse around for the new CDs, what was new in stock, and hang with my buddies at work there for a little while, you know, try not to annoy them too much while they were obviously doing work and all that kind of stuff, but still, you know, shooting the shit and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. Um, used CDs, yeah, I used to come in here, you know, always would find cool used CDs, man, really cheap, you know, you'd find, like, some classic black metal on the 90s for, like, eight, ten bucks, and I guess it just gets picked through so quickly now, because stuff like that's so hot, so if you're not, you know, just don't have the right timing, you're not going to get it. But, um, yeah, that's the way things have gone with music and collecting music, and, yeah, I don't know. I know there's a lot of people probably just see stuff and like, ooh, I'm going to buy that and flip it on Discogs. And I don't know, man. It's kind of unfortunate for those of us that want to buy the music and actually listen to it and enjoy it. You know, I have i don't know that I've ever bought a CD, the clandest, Clandestine Blaze there. I used to own that, I believe. I, I can't remember. It's been like 20 years since I heard Clandestine Blaze. 
But anyway, I was saying that I don't, I don't think I've ever bought a CD or an LP just to flip it. Like, I always just buy stuff because I want to actually enjoy it, you know? Uh, yeah, Mayhem here. Of course, they re-released all those old shows a couple years ago. I don't know. I think it's it's fine for historical purposes, but, I mean, it's, it's limited actual enjoyment there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, more CDs, more CDs. Uh, oh, there's a Metallica section, of course, yeah. Gotta have lots of Metallica stock. Yeah, more used CDs. What is that? I don't know. Metallica, Motorhead, My Dying Bride. All that stuff in the 90s is so good for My Dying Bride. Missed to come. Here I'm like, oh shit, where's the Lost Masters of the Universe? Ah, oh, son of a bitch, they don't have it. Only the streams of the Inferno. <laughs> More you stuff, more you stuff. What's that? Whoa, what was that? Oh, nothing good. Fuck it. <laughs> Onslaught. Saw them live in England back in 2010. Mild enjoyment, I would say. More you stuff, you stuff. It's funny, there's, there's times where I go and look through the, the used CDs there, and I see CDs that I sold to them, like, I don't know, like, ten years ago or something, they're still sitting there. <laughs> kind of funny, really. I think, uh, I'd have to check, but I think I actually, uh, my, my CDs from my Dark Ambient project, not to look in, are still sitting in the shop somewhere, too. I should probably go, uh, go look and see if they're still there. They probably are, because I don't know who the hell would buy them. Yeah, more you stuff, more you stuff. Who's that guy? Robeldo. What the fuck is that? Saxon. Yep. Yeah. What do we got here? Oh, what's in the back there? Hey, what's that? Oh, is that Duracon? Oh, it's just those bullshit reissues and their new crap that completely sucks. Ugh. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, more you stuff. Well, here we are. There's the X. Exclusive company Metal House banner. More look at the CDs and some other shit that's up there. Dio and I don't know what that is. There's a logo. I wonder if someone's gonna take that take that logo home with them and like uh, put that in their house. That'd be cool. Maybe they'll auction it off or something. Anthrax Testament and uh, yeah, more vinyls and here's a look at the rest of the shop. There's also lots of other really good stuff in the shop. I mean, this used to be right here was a whole big like. 70s prog rock section is really cool. I used to like digging through that and finding some old stuff from the 70s since I'm a big fan of that. And then, you know, here's like the more just typical rock pop section, but it's just, you know, real diverse. Any, literally anything that's not like metal or hard rock was in this section of the store. You know, rap, whatever, blues, oldies, you name it. The, the store had a lot of cool stuff. Punk, mu punk music, just everything, man. Even had, like, some neo-folk stuff, like Kurt 93, Death in June, or weird electronic stuff, like Coil the Headstock pretty often, so, yeah, I mean, it was a cool shop, I mean, it's, it's, I'm definitely gonna miss it, it's unfortunate it's closing, but it is what it is, uh, they also had lots of horror movies, and just, you know, movies in general, uh, Blu-rays, DVDs, maybe there's even some VHS, I don't know, I can't remember, but, uh, yeah, you know, there's plans to, uh, keep the store going, but it's more than likely, or I should say, it will be ran under a different name, which is not as cool to me. I mean, it's, I don't know, it, it, it's not the same, because who knows if the person that takes a shop over will even have the same taste in music. They might be like, oh, well, I can't have fire, because he's a, he's a racist, so I'm going to take those off, or some stupid shit like that, you know? But uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, like I said, it'd be, it would be cool just to have a local record store nonetheless, but uh, yeah. Well, here we are leaving, and uh, yeah, that is about it for this exclusive company tour. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope my voiceover dialogue wasn't too bad, but I assure you it's better than the emo pop that was playing in the background during this. And uh, quick look at the logo, and hope I don't get hit by a car. All right, there it is. All right, guys, well, that's it. That's probably my last visit to the exclusive company, but we'll see what happens. There are... Uh GoFundMe's out there to at least continue it as a record store, although 
the name exclusive company is definitely being retired, which I mean, with the owner passing, it kind of makes sense, but at the same time, it's like, it sucks. You know, it's a, it's the end of an era. You know, you're talking about a record store opened up way back in 1956. I mean, that's, that's a long time ago, man. So, uh, it's unfortunate, but anyway, here's what I picked up. Uh, just found one CD this time, just, I don't know, I didn't really see anything that overly was grabbing my attention. So, we got uh, the Inal Nathrak Total Fucking Necro CD. Yeah, this is a re-release, actually a re-release, re-release of their demos, which I believe are all from the late 90s, like 98 or 99. Um, these guys, this guy's first album is still a, a a blackened death metal grindish masterpiece to me and I know that uh, their demos are I always heard their demos are really good I just remember like man I think like a, this old site like mp3.com or something like that I had heard the cover the two mayhem covers and I was like wow this is really good it's actually what originally got me into the band even though I haven't really followed them that closely over the years but uh, that early stuff uh, and hopefully these demos are you know would be really cool so anyway guys, uh, thanks again for watching the vlog, hope you enjoyed this, uh, really sorry about the, the emo pop in the background, that was fucking tragic, but uh, it is what it is. Um, anyway, thanks, see you next time on Joe's Metal Man Cave Vlog.